All right, welcome back to the second to last example from chapter eight. We're going to be thinking about two dimensional collisions, which are not especially difficult as long as we are being careful about direction. Direction information in physics has a lot of meaning, and we need to make sure, like we've been trying to think about since chapter three, that our two dimension understanding is, is still being used here. So, one of the most important things I can recommend with two dimensional problems is to make a longer list than we might be used to thinking about to really make sure we know what information we have and what information we're looking for. So in these two dimensional problems, there really are only 10 total things that can ever show up in our two dimensional problems. We have the mass, we have the initial velocity in the x direction, we have the initial velocity in the y direction, we have the final velocity in the x direction, and we have the final velocity in the y direction. And we have this for the first mass and for the second. So making this list for ourselves will help make sure that we're thinking about where all of our different number values go. So for this mass, the three kilogram mass, we're gonna call that one the first mass and this the second. That's just a choice that we are using that we could um, swap those two, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't change our understanding of the problem. So now that we've chosen the three kilogram block to be mass one, and the five kilogram block to be mass two. At the beginning of the problem, the three kilogram block is moving directly sideways. This tripped up a lot of students on test one, and we need to make sure we understand that directly sideways has some really important meaning to it. It means that all of that four meters per second is sideways, and none of it is up and down. Now, at the end of the problem, we have a triangle that we can draw. We have that the x component of this is going to be 3 cosine 50 degrees. And we have that the y component of this would be 3 sine 50 degrees. We have been breaking angled vectors into components this entire time, and we don't want to stop now. So that 3 cosine 50 degrees and 3 sine 50 degrees we can put in our calculators. That 3 cosine 50 degrees is our x component based on where the angle is, and so that's 1.93 meters per second. It's to the right, so we'll call that positive. And then the 3 sine 50 degrees is the um, final component in the y direction, and that's 2.3 zero meters per second and it's up and we'll call that our positive direction as well. Now if we go back to the five kilogram block, the five kilogram block is at rest initially. That means that its initial x velocity is zero and its initial y velocity is zero. We are trying to find the overall velocity, which means we need to calculate the x component and we need to calculate the y component of that velocity and put them together in a final triangle. And all of that setup is extremely useful because now we know exactly what information we have and we'll be given the equation that we need at test time so we have the same overall equation that we've been seeing before. We just have x subscripts on it for the x equation and y subscripts on it for the y equation. But otherwise it works the same kind of way. For the x direction, we're just looking at our nice list. We have 3 times 4 and we have 5 times 0. That was at the beginning. At the end, we have 3 times 1.93 and 5 times our unknown v2 final x. All right, so we have 12 is equal to 5.79 plus 5.79.
5v2 fx. So we can subtract this from both sides. And we get 6.21 is equal to 5v2 fx. We divide by 5. And so we get that the x component, which we will need, is 1.24. It came out positive meters per second. So we'll use that piece. Then for the y direction, it is the same general idea. We have the same equation, but with y components. And we have everything laid out for us above. So we just have to plug in numbers and solve for our unknown. So 3 times 0 plus 5 times 0 is equal to 3 times 2.3 plus 5v2fy. So we have 0 equals 6.9 plus v2fy. We'll subtract 6.9 from both sides. So negative 6.9 equals 5v2fy. We divide both sides by 5. And so we get that the final y component of the velocity is negative 1.38 meters per second. So we're almost done the problem. The key thing is that to get the velocity, which means the size and the direction of it, we have to make a final triangle. We have a component that is to the right, 1.24, and we have a component which is down, 1.38. So to finish this problem, we just need the overall final v, and we need the angle. That overall final velocity is going to come from a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the square root of 1.24 squared plus 1.38 squared. So that overall size of the final velocity is 1.86 meters per second. So that's part of the final answer. And the angle here, the tangent of that angle is the opposite, 1.38, over the adjacent, 1.24 which means that the angle itself, kind of run out of room, is the arc tangent of that, 1.38 over 1.24, and that comes out to be 48 degrees. If we've drawn a picture, we don't have to specify that it's south of east. We just have to have that picture, the labeled angle, and then the number value for it. And then the problem is done. So we needed to get the x component from the x equation, the y uh, component from the y equation, and then we have enough to get our final triangle. And that's it for the problem. You'll notice that there's not a lot of complex algebra. We had to subtract and then divide, subtract and then divide, then use two pieces of trigonometry that we've been using since chapter 3. But otherwise, the important setup part of these types of problems is just making sure we label all our information carefully at the very beginning of it. So I will see you in that last example problem.